Chapter 14 in the Cisco Academy curriculum is on the transport layer. Now I've made many videos on the transport layer, but here's another one to go with this year's group of videos. So the transport layer in the TCP IP model, also known as layer four in the OSI model. When we're talking about the transport layer, first of all, we're talking about port numbers. And we talk about port numbers. These are logical ports. These are not physical ports on your computer. These are logical ports and they're numbered according to a service. So the well-known port numbers are 0 to 1023, and those identify common services and applications. These are really well-known services like HTTP or um, Telnet or FTP or things that are very common. Then you have the registered ports on port numbers 1024 to 49,151. Now these are assigned by the IANA by request from companies for processes, servers, applications that they want to run and need a number assigned to for that server, for that port. And then the, you have the private and dynamic, and dynamic ports, which are 49,152 to 65,535. And these are typically used, also known as the ephemeral ports, to identify a client in a connection. So they're randomly assigned to a client when you make a connection to a server. The socket pair. A socket pair or a socket is a connection that involves a source and a destination IP address and a source and destination port number. Now a socket is an IP address with a port number. A socket pair is the source and the destination. So you can see here we have a source IP address 192.168.1.100 and then you have the the source port number 53,121. So this would be the dynamic port that identifies the client in this conversation. And that's initiating a conversation to the destination, which is the IP address 209.165.100.222, let's say, for example, on port 80. And you can see the colon 80. And uh, port 80 identifies the HTTP web service. So this would be an example of a socket pair where a client is connecting to a web server and the client has port number 53,121 and the server is identified as a web server on port 80. The two most recognizable protocols at the transport layer are TCP and UDP. And most applications and services on the internet when you make the connection are using either TCP or UDP. So TCP is characterized as a reliable protocol. And I have slow here, but it's not a slow protocol. It's mostly reliable. But compared to UDP, which is a fast protocol and unreliable, then we can say that TCP is slow and reliable and UDP, by contrast, is fast and unreliable. UDP is used in voice over IP connections, real-time streaming protocols or services, and online games. So UDP is used when the application or service can, can survive or can handle some packet loss. So let's look at some more characteristics. So TCP involves stateful connection and UDP has stateless connection. So that means that in TCP, the session state, well, there are TCP session states and they are maintained. And then, so the, the connection knows what the state is. And then in also part of the stateful connection is session info that's also maintained. So there's negotiated parameters or session information and that's maintained. Both the client and the server know that information. And by contrast in UDP, there's no session state and there's no session, session info that's maintained. So we call it a stateless connection. And we call TCP stateful connection. So TCP, in regards to saying, well, it's, it's slow, one of the reasons we, we can say that is that um, it has a large overhead. It has many header fields in the TCP header, and the header fields can, be, uh, can have 20 to 60 bytes in that header field. Now, UDP has small overhead. It has fewer header fields. There's only four header fields in a UDP header, and the total size is eight bytes. So you can see here that the overhead eight bytes compared to 20 bytes minimum for TCP. And by the way, 
the TCP PDU is called a segment and UDP PDU is called a datagram. Okay, TCP is also connection oriented. So to establish a TCP connection, you start off with that connection which involves a three-way handshake. So before we exchanged, um, before TCP is used and data is exchanged between a client and a server, there has to be a connection established and that involves a three-way handshake which involves a SYN, uh, synchronization, a SYN and an ACK, synchronization and acknowledgement, and then an ACK. So it's three ways. So it's, it's a three-way handshake. So first is the SYN from the client to the server. The server responds with a SYN and an ACK and then the client responds with an ACK. And that sets up the connection. Now, in contrast in UDP, UDP is transaction oriented. It's a simple query and response protocol, and it doesn't, re it doesn't require there to be this initial three-way handshake. So UDP can be used in, it can be used for broadcasts and multicasts. In other words, you can have a UDP, um, a UDP broadcast that gets sent out to many clients um, because it doesn't involve having to set up a connection for each one of those clients. So it can be used in a broadcast or multicast scenario. Okay, also, last but not least, one of the big differences here between TCP and UDP is TCP is reliable and UDP is unreliable. So what does that mean? So in TCP, in the header, we have information in those header fields and the information are things like sequence numbers. So every byte in the communication gets a sequence number. And we also have acknowledgments. So as data is transferred, there it's acknowledged by the receiver. So if a server sends data to a client, it sends that data, and then an acknowledgment is sent in reply with the sequence number, which, which lets the sender know that the receiver is receiving the information. Part of why we can say TCP is reliable is because it involves the, the possibility for retransmission. In other words, lost data can be retransmitted. Now UDP, in contrast, there's no retransmission. So since there's no retransmission, there's also no retransmission delays. So retransmission in TCP can be done if you have uh, duplicate acknowledgments three times. So let's say a um, segments, right? or pieces of the data, bytes of the data are lost, and let's say one piece out of 10 is lost, well, the receiver will keep basically, when, when the acknowledgement comes, they'll keep acknowledging the same amount of data, saying, I still need to get this information. When a timer times out, it'll send the acknowledgement, and it'll be asking for the same sequence number. So we'll call that, if that happens three times, that's called a duplicate acknowledgement, and then the sender will retransmit. Also, that timer, that set, once it starts sending, if it times out and there hasn't been an acknowledgement, it will also retransmit what it just sent. The sender will retransmit the last group or the last window of information. And then you also have selective acknowledgements. So not only can the receiver send an acknowledgement once it's received the data, but it can selectively acknowledge so that if some segments are lost but others are gained, it can send acknowledgements for what it received and what it didn't receive, and the sender can then retransmit the pieces that are missing. TCP also has error detection through a TCP checksum. It has flow control, so it can, it can slow up the sending of information, and that flow control involves a sliding window, which is the receive window, which is negotiated or um, is sent to the sender from the receiver for how much information the sender can send before needing to receive an acknowledgement. So this flow control can help slow down how much information the receiving device um, can process. And if it's, it's becoming overwhelmed, it can change that receive window, causing the sender to send less information. TCP also has congestion control with smooth round trip times for how much it can basically, the average amount that it can send and the timing it can, that it can send it in. It has maximum segment size. It has maximum segment size. So 
how big the segments are. These, this can also be negotiated. So how much data is in, let's say, uh, is in the segment, how much data is involved. And once again, selective acknowledgements, which can be used to acknowledge discontinuous blocks of packets which were received correctly. Now, so a lot of this has to do the reliability with the ability to retransmit lost data, which makes it reliable. Now UDP, on the other hand, it's unreliable. UDP applications must tolerate some packet loss, like streaming video, or let's say voice over IP. You don't really want to retransmit the missing um, voice, missing voice uh, half a second of voice data because that would just mess the call up. Um, it can also, it also, UDP applications also have to be able to handle reordering, etc. There's no sequence numbers, no acknowledgements. However, there's no retransmission delays. So there's no delays involved with that, which makes it really fast. If something is missing or lost, it just moves on. And so these are, it's perfect for applications that can just move on and go to the next piece of data and not worry about that lost piece. However, that doesn't work with a thing like an email where you it can't tolerate missing information. Your email needs to needs all the information. Your web page needs all the information. However, your streaming video can deal with a loss of data and just keep on going. UDP does have error detection, a checksum field in its header. And that's a little bit about the transport layer and TCP and UDP.